Uh, thank you so much for having me here today, uh, Mr. Christopher, Dr. Langerman, Dr. Rosenthal. This is, uh, and you know, the whole Vanderbilt team. This is a really great opportunity. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, an app that we developed to help junior trainees uh, understand sound and nasal anatomy. Uh, you know, particularly as a junior resident and uh, definitely as a medical student, uh, sign and nasal anatomy is is hard. It's it's challenging. It's three dimensional. And when we think about the current teaching tools that are available, you know, we have two dimensional CT imaging. We have pictures from textbooks uh, and then we have a lot of sinus videos that are available online. Uh, but when it comes to interactive simulations, there's really nothing that matches the gold standard in otolaryngology that we have which is the mass ioneers 3D virtual temporal bone. Um, in rhinology, like I was saying, there's lots of video links, Head Mirror um, out of Mayo and uh, sinusvideos.com, really great stuff. And even Eugene Chang's group out of Arizona made a, a video series with highlighted structures for trainees to start to understand this three-dimensional imaging. But especially in sort of this schematized version that helps people understand relationships between critical structures, uh, this is a great image from uh, Kennedy and Huang's textbook uh, from Sarah Weiss's chapter, uh, but there's no interactive simulation. So uh, looking at this, we set out to uh, create a tool uh, that had two kind of modes. The first is uh, what we call an explore mode. Uh, we want to create interactive 3D schematic model of the lower sinuses and help trainees correlate that with 2D and 3D CT imaging. And then we also want to incorporate intraoperative video and say, you know, how does this correlate with the view you're going to get in an endoscope? Uh, and so in terms of the innovation strategy, like I said, this was an idea that came up uh, when I was a junior resident. I was a PGY2 on our, our sinus rotation, and I I was finding anatomy, the anatomy challenging to pick up at first, um, but really the critical point was finding our wonderful mentors and um, collaborators in our art as applied to medicine department at Johns Hopkins. So Shirley Lee, uh, now she's out working as a medical illustrator, but at the time she was a master's student uh, getting her MFA uh, at Hopkins. And Juan Garcia is a prosthetics expert who works a lot with our head and neck cancer patients, but uh, he's also a terrific artist and mentor. Uh, and then we thought very early about the distribution uh, plan that we had for this and, and our goals. Our main challenges here was, was the timeline because this was Shirley's master's project. So we had to get it done in a reasonable amount of time for her to be able to write her dissertation and also funding. And fortunately, our T32 research program, uh, we are given some discretionary funding uh, that I was able to put to this. Uh, so we got CT imaging from a patient with a plantar meningioma. Uh, and the reason we did that was that he would have the appropriate high resolution CT imaging, but not, you know, no, no major sinus abnormalities. And then uh, Photoshop, Cinema 4D, ZBrush, and Unity were used to create this app. Uh, so the first thing we did was we made a schematized version of the sinuses to really demonstrate the uh, relationships between a lot of these critical structures. Um, and then this was incorporated into uh, the actual app interface. Um, and so this is the this is how the app looks. It's pretty rudimentary, but you can see you can manipulate the 3D structures. There's a reconstruction down there. Uh, everything correlates. You can put it in full screen. There's a plane that shows where you are in terms of the axial and coronal views. Uh, when a structure is highlighted, it shows up as highlighted on all of the different screens. Uh, here we can see the optic nerve there. Um, and then if you can. If you uncheck, you can remove a structure so you can explore the 3D structure a bit more carefully. In the clinical mode, uh, it shows interoperative video. And as you can see up here, it locks the schematic view in an endoscopic view. Um, that was sped up. It's a, it's a little bit easier to see in the actual app. Um, and so in the future directions, you know, we're not planning on commercializing this from the outset. We wanted this to make, uh, wanted this to be a free resource for students and uh, junior residents worldwide to try and use. It's available now on our department's website for free download as a Mac or a Windows app if you guys want to check it out. And uh, we're currently working on face validity studies with medical students and junior residents this summer. Um, and so in terms of future directions, you know, Johns Hopkins does have these uh, digital education and learning technology acceleration, these Delta grants. Um, and we're thinking about maybe applying for one of those to, to go towards improving the UI, uh, adding some mobile capability, um, additional OR videos, um, and, and maybe including frontal sinus anatomy in the model as well uh, to make it you know useful for senior residents as well. And I really just want to thank all our collaborators, without which whom you know this would not have been possible. Shirley is a tremendous artist, and as is Juan, uh, and then uh, Dr. Nick Rowan is uh, my rhinology mentor for this project. So thank you. Happy to answer any questions.
This is great. I actually uh, I did a project um, with Paul Russell at Vanderbilt um, in, in EMT. Um, we did a robotics call based system in grad school. And I can tell you, me trying to learn it as an engineer, yeah, it was impossible. I can't imagine. Um, you know, Paul would always say, oh, don't you see it's here? I'm like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. Paul. <laughs> Things all look the same. Um, so this would be a really useful tool uh, for a lot of people. Um, so you mentioned not planning to, to commercialize it. Um, do you feel like there's um, a way to then increase the educational value beyond um, uh, maybe residents or, or med students? Um, what about like patient consultations? Could it help clinicians um, with a patient consult where they could give this tool to a patient and say, hey, here's, a, um, here's what we're gonna do basically. Here's the anatomy, here's the plan. Go ahead and look at this at home. And that way when they come in, they already have some, um, some knowledge. Yeah, you know, that's it. That's a tremendous idea. You know, we had really envisioned this more as a clinical educational tool. Um, a couple of the neurosurgeons, uh, you know, who, especially the neurosurgery residents, uh, getting into endoscopic skull base surgery for the first time were interested in this tool, but I, I, we've never had discussions about it as a patient tool, and that that's a great idea. Um, obviously, there would have to be some tweaks uh, to make it a bit more accessible, but uh, that's a that's a terrific idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and one other thing that, that came to mind looking at this is I wonder if there's a way to, and I think it could still be free, but you know, companies coming out with new tools, new devices, maybe a new sinuplasty balloon, they bring that, uh, incorporate it in with your system. You can have a video showing it in use, showing how this tool is maybe gonna be uh, better than what's out there, uh, just as a way to, again, educate clinicians on a new tool that's available, something to help their patients. Yeah, that's a terrific idea. Um, and obviously, the, there's all kinds of things you can think about there, which would be like looking for IP, uh, yeah. licensing it out to different companies. Um, yeah, great. thank you. Those are great suggestions. Yeah, great presentation. Thank you.